um, and others to uh, organize that. So uh, we just had our first little plan call this this past week, and uh, and uh, we're threading through the shutdown, uh, trying to make this happen. But um, uh, for those of you interested, we'll be putting out more um, information for uh, participation and. Uh, We'll be have a nice big uh, celebration. And this is just to reiterate: it's the first of its kind in the nation. That's a, a ground-up construction to combine a, a DoD clinic, family clinic, and veterans. So for those of you who are military families and those of you who are veterans, you'll go through the same door. First one in the country where that really treats the whole population as a as a single population. So uh, I look forward to seeing you on the 11th. Thanks. Thank you, Alec. I would like to acknowledge the large number of veterans we have out in the audience. It's a who's who of veterans of the uh, the Central Coast. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the Assistant District Attorney, uh, Jimmy Panetta, who's been instrumental, and we'll talk about that later on, and, and having making funding available here for uh, the Veteran Cemetery. So it's been a long time coming. Michael, do you have any acknowledgments or announcements right now? If not, we'll start the reason while we're here, new business. So uh, we'll have a briefing, and we'll have a vote later on about the California Central Coast Veterans uh, Cemetery Loan Grant. Uh, staff is asking us to authorize the executive officer to execute an agreement with David and Lucille Packard Foundation for a loan of $350,000 to finance the uh, uh, Central Coast uh, Veterans Cemetery. And they've asked that we authorize the executive officer to apply for a $100,000 grant from the David and Lucille Packard Foundation to finance the CCCAC. Michael, you take it away. Yes, uh, Chair Edlin and members of the board. Uh, as well as members of the public, four staff have been working with the David and Lucille Packer Foundation this past week to assemble and finalize the documentation that's required to make an application to the foundation for a program-related investment. Up above over there, you'll see that we're working through a rather tight timeline. The Packer Foundation folks have informed us this as as speedy a process for a program-related investment that they've ever done. Uh, and most of these take about 90 days or so to accomplish. This was started roughly three days ago and it will be finished by the 15th of October. We're requesting the Florida Board authorize today our staff to submit that $350,000 PRI loan application. We will collateralize that loan with about 12 acres of Fora owned former Fort Orr land pieces in the city of Seaside and the county of Monterey. In order to make that happen, the city of Seaside and the county have to concur and allow us over the course of the coming year to use that as collateral. The city of Seaside accomplished that first piece last night. Uh, there's a resolution which, uh, if the chair chooses to read, anybody wants to see that is available at the desk. The county of Monterey will take that issue up next Tuesday. Um, for this special timeline of getting this accomplished in roughly 10 days or so. The loan is going to be at about a one, is, will be at a 1% uh, rate, <clears throat> paid off in two semi-annual payments. Those repayments are going to come from future fundraising that's going to be accomplished in part by the California Central Coast Veterans Cemetery Foundation, but also by many others in the community who agreed to uh, continue to contribute and help. If uh, approved, we're also asking the Fora Board to authorize me as the executive officer to accept the loan if it's approved by the foundation and to authorize all the actions associated with the acceptance of that loan along with the grant. For example, execute a trust deed, confirm the escrow instructions, and to set wire instructions for funds to go from Packard Foundation to the escrow, from the escrow to the state account the endowment fund where the funds have to be submitted. We have been working very closely with the Packard Foundation to make sure all these target dates are accomplished. We've only had about 27 uh, conference calls this week and we have about four or five or six more next week. I won't uh, tell you just how comfortable I've become with uh, Jason Burnett uh, and his uh, children. <laughs> and his family over the course of the last couple of weeks, but uh, granted, uh, you all know they are very much involved in this as well. All the dates are noted up above. In essence, because October 14th is a bank holiday, these funds really have to be in uh, by next Friday in order to make sure that what's known in the escrow and banking world as good funds be ready by the 50th so that we can submit that to the state. 
Um, you all know that there are other folks that have been working on this feverishly. If it's okay with the chair, I think I'd like to ask Jimmy and Jason to talk about the status of the funding and their participation. I think uh, Bill Bonning will, once that's done, has a, will have a few comments as well on the state level. Please. Thank you very much, Chair, members of the four board, staff, and, uh, veterans, members of the public. I'm Jason Burnett, Mayor of Carmel. I, I would normally be sitting uh, there, uh, but because I wear two hats, I'm also a trustee of the Packard Foundation. I will not be doing that. In fact, uh, when it comes time to your deliberations, I will leave and head home uh, with, uh, with my boy and trust that you make a decision that is in the best interest of Fora uh, and the community. However, I am here uh, to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, the work that we've been doing. Uh, you're familiar with, with the promise that was made 20 years ago to veterans and, and the extensive work and, uh, from I think many people's perspective, uh, the very long path uh, to get to uh, where we are today or where I think October 15th. Uh, it is because of uh, very good, uh, strong leadership from Mayor Ralph Rubio, uh, from uh, Supervisor Potter, and the rest of the, uh, there's no other supervisors here that I should recognize, the rest of the supervisors uh, in transferring the relevant land uh, to uh, the uh, state, uh, to the leadership of Congressman Sam Farr, in remarkably being able to bring in a grant on literally the day that the government shut down, I guess getting that in just under the wire, a grant for uh, $6.7 million. Uh, and because of the leadership of Senator Bill Monning and Assemblymember Mark Stone in advancing SB 232 uh, through the Senate and the Assembly uh, with overwhelming support, it sits now on the governor's desk, uh, that we are closer than we've ever been to making good on, on the promise to our veterans and their families for a veteran cemetery here in the former Fort Order. The reason that we have uh, such a time crunch, and I am so appreciative of Forest staff for going through the due diligence that Packer Foundation staff have been uh, working through, is that we have until uh, two weeks from Tuesday uh, October 15th for uh, the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what, what, two, two weeks from the time that the uh, grant was issued, uh, two weeks from October 1st, uh, which is October 15th, for the state to have $2.617 thousand dollars, uh, sorry, $2.617 million dollars in their custody uh, so that they have the funds in hand for the state match uh, to be comfortable accepting the federal grant. Uh, the federal government requires an answer uh, to their $6.7 million grant within two weeks. Uh, and so we have been working, Senator Monning approached us about six weeks ago and uh, highlighted this opportunity and asked whether Jimmy Panetta and I would uh, chair a steering committee uh, to make uh, the local contribution possible. As of today, I, we are uh, very proud to say, with your action, if you do approve this, uh, we will be there. Uh, we will be there because uh, we, we will be there in terms of having the money in the state account. We will have $350,000 through a loan, $100,000 through a grant. Earlier today, Jimmy Panetta and I met with Ted Balistreri. Uh, and he has committed to loaning an additional $150,000. That combined with the money that would be approved today gets us to the $600,000. Let me just pause for a second. Let's realize how long and how I, the people behind me have waited for this to become a reality. We are, uh, we are a week and a few days away from, uh, from making 
a significant step forward towards uh, that, that promise. I, I do want to repeat the generosity of, of Mr. Balstrieri in offering uh, to put a $150,000 loan, the same terms as the Packard Foundation loan, although it would not be made to FORA, so it's not an action that you need to take uh, today uh, that would get us where we need to go. Let me note that that does not mean that we are done. In fact, that really is the start of the earnest fundraising effort. Have before you a brochure that is hot, hot off the printers as of yesterday uh, that is the capital campaign that we are embarking upon to raise the $500,000 that we need uh, to repay these two loans. I encourage you to take a look at that uh, to consider what you yourself can do. Uh, if you would like both of us to come meet with you, meet with members of your community uh, to explain the reasons for, uh, for contributing, uh, we would be more than happy to do so. Um, with that, I will turn it to Jimmy Panetta to elaborate on our work. You know, there's really not much more I can say after that. I appreciate that. Um, once again, I, I am uh, Jimmy Panetta, uh, Chairman of Edelman, members of the board. Um, thank you uh, for meeting today. I know it meant a lot for you to scramble and to get here, and we truly appreciate that. Uh, but that's kind of how it's been the last few weeks. We've been scrambling to get this done. And I am very glad and tremendously proud to say that we have got that done. We have got this done. And that is why we stand before you, to let you know that, to let the veterans know that who have waited so long for this. So I can't really talk with Jason, uh, just inform you, uh, but I just can say that uh, we appreciate you being here and we appreciate your consideration for this. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And I also just want to offer my thanks to um, Executive Director Hulamar and his staff and to the Chair and all the members for the mobilization uh, not just being here this afternoon, but what led up to it in terms of uh, all the work that's been going on. Uh, I also just want to really acknowledge the work of Mayor Burnett and Mr. Panetta in taking on this challenge with no sense of hesitation and really performing miracles in the last two weeks. But to underscore what they said, uh, while this represents uh, a funding uh, achievement to secure the federal commitment. Uh, it is the starting line for doing the community fundraising effort. Um, the Veterans Foundation, the Cemetery Foundation, has labored for years um, and already contributed a $200,000 grant to the state fund for operations and maintenance that is important to recognize uh, the labor and the effort uh, that that represents and also to acknowledge the partnership now with the Community Foundation uh, for Monterey County which has also mobilized rapidly to participate and help um, work with the co-chairs in spearheading this capital campaign. Uh, let me turn for a moment to kind of the state uh, status of where we are with State of California <clears throat> Uh, first, I also do want to acknowledge the leadership of Congressman Farr for years in keeping this project front and center through thick and thin and through um, making good on his commitment in that of U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, and as was mentioned on the, on the eve of the government shutdown, uh, the state of California is receiving its grant letter, which does set in motion this two-week timetable. Uh, on the state level, as many of you know, we have SB 232, um, authored by me, co-authored by Assemblymember uh, Stone and Assemblymember Alejo, um, also uh, Senator Canella, uh, and this is now on the governor's desk. It, it will result with his signature in a $1 million appropriation. Uh, it will replace the $1.5 million loan uh, that we secured in the budget uh, last June to perfect the application to the federal government. So we replaced that $1.5 loan with an outright $1 million appropriation. 
and we have a commitment of another million dollars uh, to match SB 232 uh, when signed by the governor. He has until next Friday, um, and I know many of you have already sent letters of support. We've gotten broad um, community support, but for any municipality or organization or others who have not yet weighed in with the governor's office, it's not too late. Um, so we would encourage uh, letters of support, probably fax messages would be the best at this point. Um, probably not phone calls, although I don't want to discourage anyone from making a phone call, but I think the written letter from a, a city, an organization, or an individual, um, if it could be sent this afternoon or Monday, uh, we want the, as thick a file as possible on the governor's desk. And I've been in touch with the governor's office as uh, recently as this morning, and we've been assured that we're in the queue. Um, but again, I just, we can't jump the gun until it is signed. Um, it doesn't fill that piece of the puzzle, which triggers uh, the one million in SB 232 and the one million dollar um, contribution that will match that. That's our two million. We've heard of the, the plan for the 600,000 and that will perfect the deposit um, in the state endowment account that will allow the Department of Finance of the state of California to sign off on the grant from the federal government to move forward. Uh, that first phase includes design, drawings, architecture, environmental studies, and construction of phase one of the cemetery, uh, which is already that designated parcel of just under 78 acres, uh, is already transferred from the county and fora with your vote to the state of California. Um, and this will be uh, the significant uh, step forward to uh, bringing this dream to reality. I also just want to acknowledge uh, those who are here today and those who aren't here today, either because they're not able to make today's meeting or they've made the ultimate sacrifice and their families uh, await uh, securing this dream for our community. Um, it's been a volatile conversation at times uh, and I just want to thank those who have kept a singular focus as I've tried to do on bringing the resources necessary to establish the Central Coast Veterans Cemetery. With your vote today we move one step closer um, and I just have to be clear we got a couple of other hurdles we're on a tight timeline uh, with your vote today uh, I am cautiously optimistic and very confident that we're going to convert this dream to a reality. So again, thank you for all mobilizing this project. And if there's any questions, I'm glad to answer them. But um, there's so many shoulders that this project is being built upon. Uh, and I just want to thank everybody for never taking no for an answer. Um, I think some people learn that in their military training. And it's nice to see it manifest in our community as well. So thank you. Thanks. I'll now open it up for uh, board uh, questions or comments. Any comments or questions by members of our board of directors? Seeing none, out to the public. Any members of the public like to make any uh, comments, please, sir? Uh, yes, Gordon Smith with Veterans Wild Ford Uh I uh, encourage the board to vote on this affirmatively today. And uh, I want to thank Jimmy and Jason Burnett for their latest hard work. But I especially want to uh, show my appreciation for Bill Wanning and his staff, who have worked diligently since last fall to find uh, some type of financing. And it looks like we're here today. Thank you, sir. Other uh, public uh, comment with regard to this item? Oh. Tom Mancini. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Penner and Mr. Burnett. Well, uh, a, a couple of months ago, I got a new disability rating, so it gave me a little extra change, so I'd like to donate $100 uh, to the foundation. That will help stop paying the interest. We'll get to Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> thank you, sir. Next, next comment, please. My name is Margaret Davis from Friends of the Four Door War Horse. I just want to say I'm in awe of Mayor Burnett and Mr. Panetta and Senator 
Ramani. What an achievement, and uh, thank you for saving the day. We certainly look forward to the Veterans Cemetery. Thank you, Evan. Here you are. Next, please. Hello, I'm Jason Campbell, a proponent of Measure M, and I'd like to say um, it was a very exciting day. Thank you very much for all your hard work uh, coming through with this uh, this financing s schedule. I think it's um, it's brilliant, and we really look forward to having the Veterans Cemetery where it, at the uh, location it's at, and we'd like to um, see it started today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Other public, public comment period. Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Kenlin Shields. Retired Air Force, and I want to thank these gentlemen for doing what they've done. This is outstanding because, for one, my parents, my dad's 90 years old, and he's in a rest home right now. My mom has already passed away, but she's in San Joaquin, okay? All the people that have grown up here in Seaside, Monterey, Marina, you name it, in this area, they have to go there in some cases because the cemetery here in Seaside. It's getting full. It's getting very full with just the average people. Okay? Now, my mom, I wish she was here because look, all the people that have served here in this area, why do they have to go all the way over there? They've served here. People grew up here. Their parents are retired here. I'm here. I'm back here. I know a lot of people that are retired just like me. I'm 53 now. And their parents are passing away slowly, but surely they need some, somebody to come see them. Why should we have to drive all the way down there? I mean, it's okay for the people that are retired in that area, but it's not okay for the people here. There's a lot of heroes here in this area. They need to be worshipped here. They help build this place up. So I think this is the best thing that could ever happen right now. And I thank all you guys here on the board Thank my gentlemen here for making that move and making it happen. At least making it known. And I, I hope you guys can start it today. If you guys need money, I got a little bit, I'll give it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We're both standing. Next. My name is Jack Stewart. I'm the former military and veterans affairs officer for the county of Monterey. And I've seen this project from the, on from the very beginning. I was tasked by the Board of Supervisors to head up this project. I did so with vigor, and I was well educated throughout the entire process, and I appreciated the resolve of the veterans who were initially involved with it. Of the six people who went out and researched the sites for the cemetery, you see the remaining person right here. The other five are in urns, waiting to be interned in our cemetery on the central coast on Fort Lauderdale. I think that, that just speaks volumes for the resolve of the veterans community. We thank our local lawmakers, federal, state, You've done a yeoman's task. You've, stead, you've stood beside this project without fail the entire time. We came here 20 years ago, hat in hand, saying, please give us a veteran cemetery. We never said, you're going to get us one. That's how veterans truly are. We don't demand anything. We merely ask. That's what we're all about. And I thank the duo of Jimmy Panetta and our uh, mayor, uh, Jason Burnett, from the city of Carmel for heading up this last moment project. It was awesome. We appreciate it. And uh, I'm pledging $5,000. Whoa. So, <laughs> but on behalf of those who are not departed, and I know I speak for them, thank you so very much 
And I know your vote will be yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Janet Parks and I'm retired Navy and I've been working on the foundation for the last 15 years and all I've got to say is hooray! <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank everybody who's helped us, uh, Jimmy Panetta and Jason Harden and uh, Senator Monty. I think it's wonderful what you're doing and it's just a great day and the reason we wanted a cemetery is you heard the, the gentleman ahead of us who has his mother book buried over in San Joaquin, and he wants a place for his dad and his mother near home. Well, that's why we work to get a cemetery, just for you people, you veterans who need to be near home, what you consider for board. And thank you very much for your service and all your work and all your donations. Thank you all. Thank you. Hi. I'm Dan Presser, and I want to thank everybody that's been involved with this from Sam Farr and everybody here today, and uh, also want to remind everybody about the wonderful website here. And uh, one thing that, that I'd like you to keep in mind is, unfortunately for some, it's too late. We've dragged our feet for too long. If you'll recall, last year for the golf tournament, we had the Galarza family. We honored them. Do you recall that? Do you recall that their son was killed in Afghanistan? And this man is a cauliflower worker, the father, Mr. Galarza. He could not afford to bury his son in a local cemetery because we didn't have the cemetery that we so desperately need. The closest military cemetery was Santanella, a two-hour car drive away. And their car, their truck, was not good enough to go around the corner, let alone go visit their son in Santanella. So cauliflower workers got together and they made donations to the Galarza family and they buried their son in a private cemetery in Salinas. That should not have happened. And it shouldn't happen in the future. And also, another example of, of why we really need this. One of my best friends was Abel Quinones. Uh -huh. And his wife is sitting here today. Judy, would you stand, please? That's Judy Quinones. I asked Judy what she did with wonderful Abel. She said, I had him cremated. And he's in the closet with his brother. That should not have happened. That is a shame. We should all be ashamed that we do not have a dedicated resting place for those who gave their lives and their, their time, their years, to this country. So thank you for what I hope you will do today. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, gentlemen, ladies, Jay Fagan, Vice Chair for Government Affairs of Monarch Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. My CEO couldn't be with us today, but we had to come and express our profound thanks and gratitude for the leadership and tireless dedication of Congressman Sam Farr, Senator Monty, their staff, and certainly this, this incredible push, unprecedented, I think, in this area, probably in the country, of Jason Burnett and Jimmy Panetta. And that's just absolutely an unbelievable work dedication. It, it reminds you, in, in government affairs, we talk about all politics is local, and it doesn't get more local and more heartfelt and more important than our veterans community. So I'm assuming, I think we all are, that the vote today will be yes. We encourage that to, to, to continue to move forward. Remember, it's not over. We have a lot of work ahead. We encourage you to join with us. The Chamber and its members are there as well. Uh, we have sent our uh, urging in letter format to Governor Brown, we encourage you if you haven't to do so, because we're not here, we're just not there yet, but I think we will if we keep the pressure on. So thanks to everyone, thank you for your work and coming out today, we really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Any other public speakers? 
Good afternoon. I'm Richard Garza. I think I'm doomed uh, to always be following Jack Stewart in his different parts. Because <laughs> I followed Jack as the Military Veterans Affairs Officer for the county, and I followed Janet as president of the, uh, the Cemetery Foundation. I don't want to speak for myself. I, my wife couldn't be here today, and I'm going to speak for her. This cemetery is very important to her. Uh, her father is a veteran. He now resides in our closet. And she's been wanting to have a place where she can go visit him since we've been married. And on her behalf, I really want to thank all the efforts everybody's made to get this done, including this board, because you've all been very supportive all along. And I um, hope to see a favorable vote again today. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment? Uh, Mr. Chair, board members, staff, my name is Carlos Ramos. I am a Seaside volunteer and uh, representative of Sea Jobs, Coalition for Jobs, Opportunity, and Business in Seaside. Everything has already been said. All of the thank yous, I totally agree. And to all, Mayor Burnett, Jimmy, thank you. To all of the stakeholders, and the most recent, from Cannery Road, we appreciate that. Reality check. Last night, there was a vote from the city of Seaside. Thank you, Mayor Rubio. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, Oglesby. Once again, Seaside, one of the most needed for jobs, opportunity, and business in the entire region has once again stepped forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's one thing for those of us out in the community to take whatever perspective to be called thugs. It's another that our leaders are also referred to as thugs. Just because we take into consideration Senator Romani, uh, God bless you, you know that there's been some very volatile conversations. But here at the ground level, it's disgusting. But we still move forward. We still try to do the best thing we can for our community. What you are about to do is part of that stepping forward. You know, it gets messy. That sausage and that chorizo on the weekends looks and tastes great. But I'll tell you, while you're trying to make it and putting it together, it's messy. So to the city of Seaside, once again, I'll repeat it, Mayor Rubio, Mayor Pro Tem, Oglesby, and the council members that just said, we all have to step forward, whether we're thugs or not. But we're true to our country, we're true to our community, and we know how to do the right thing. Please move forward and vote yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment period? Any other public comment period? period? Seeing none, public comment, period, public comment period is closed. Back to the board. Um, I would entertain a motion. Okay, we have a. Uh, uh, in a second with Mayor Rubio, the uh, motion was uh, Supervisor Potter. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I might just, as a maker of the motion, um, you know, it was uh, many, many years ago, Jack Stewart came before the Board of Supervisors, when my colleague at the time, Edith Johnson, uh, was on the board. And as I think you all know, Edith was very, very prominent in the uh, redevelopment issues in around Fort Worth. And Jack made us swear that we would deliver this cemetery. That was a long, long time ago. There's been many, many military campaigns in this country, in this county, that have lasted a long time. But this campaign has gone on extremely long. It's an impressive effort, but I hope we bring the closure uh, in the very near future. And Jack, you said, uh, you know, the veterans came forward and they asked, and that's what veterans do. I, I would say that 
that while they may ask, the veterans never give up. And on this issue, you have been relentless. And it's your efforts, it's Jack, it's Janet, it's all of you that have been out there constantly keeping us mindful of that promise we made a long time ago. And I want to say I'm very, very appreciative of what you've done. We make policy decisions. Uh, we, we, you know, fight amongst ourselves upon occasion. But it's your constant reminding of uh, the importance of this uh, that I'm, I'm most proud of as a community representative. And as one of, I uh, believe, my colleague next to me is in his most, second most senior, the, I think we carry the same tenure here. Um, it's been a long time, but this is a great day. Thank you all. Well said, Dave. And you have a discussion on the motion? Yes. Yes, Ralph. I think it's uh, really appropriate that the county made the motion and the city of Seaside seconded. Mm -hmm. Seaside has always been a military town, full of veterans, full of active, and their children and their families. And it's, uh, it's been the county and the city of Seaside who stepped forward to present the land for the cemetery at the very beginning and said, yes, we are in this with you. And when it came time for the state to have that property transferred to them, we didn't ask questions. We said yes. We did it as, at the speed of at the speed of light, and to to ensure that the proper procedures were in place, as we responded to the to the requests and the asks from from uh, the federal government and from the state uh, to ensure uh, those properties were set aside for the cemetery. And just recently, uh, again, moving at the speed of light to ensure that there was collateral property for, for this loan. Seaside has been, as Michael likes to say, leaning forward in the, fox, in the foxhole to make sure that this effort is successful. But it takes a lot of people, and it takes a lot of people moving in the same direction akin to an army mobilizing, akin to mounting a campaign. We have very capable leaders in, in um, Senator Bill Monning and Congressman Farr and others, Assemblyman Stone, and all the assembled leaders here that have that singular mindset to get this done. And, and we're seeing that come forward today. And along with the county, we're we're lockstep in this issue, and uh, we'll, we're going to do whatever it takes to make sure it gets done. And I want to thank uh, Mayor Pro Tem Oglesby for all his support at the City Council in getting these things done as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph Holstein. Any other discussion on the motion? Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor to authorize the Executive Officer to execute an agreement with the David Lucille Packard Foundation for a loan of $350,000 to finance the California Central Coast Veterans Cemetery, and to authorize the executive officer to apply for a $100,000 grant from the David and Lucille Packer Foundation. All in favor, signify by saying, I'm sorry. Yes, Chair, I just want to make sure that that includes what I asked earlier, that this, all of this includes the authorization to take the actions affiliated, which are executing a trustee, confirming the escrow instructions, and setting wire instructions. Mm -hmm. Is that part of the motion? Yes. Second? Oh, sorry. It is. Okay. Um, we have to have a roll call vote. Let's have a roll call vote. This, of course, is subject to the approval by the Board of Supervisors. Okay. Right. Roll call vote, please. Mm -hmm. Nick Chulos? Aye. Mayor Gunter? Aye. Mayor Rubio? Aye. Mayor Pendergrass? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem O'Connell? Aye. Mayor Edelin? Aye. Supervisor Potter? Aye. Councilmember Selfridge? Yes. <laughs> yes. Councilmember Beach? Yes. Councilmember Morton? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Oglesby? Yes. Chair Edelin, the motion passes. statement uh, to read the 
thank some folks. The first part of it was totally destroyed by Mr. Jack Stewart, his eloquent presentation. It's impossible to follow him in any, any type of the fact that there were six original members of the Veterans uh, Committee, five of them are no longer with us, 20 years to go through here, that says it all. Uh, you can't uh, go any further than that. Um, uh, basically, we would like to thank a couple of thank yous here, just uh, for the record, to thank you to Congressman Sam Farr, who has long supported efforts to establish a veteran cemetery in Fort Worth for, for many, many years, was instrumental in securing the federal grant that's made this project possible. We greatly appreciate his ongoing support. Thank you to Assemblyman Mark Stone, who hit the ground running. He's fairly junior, but boy, he did he do a good job of coming in and helping this organization. Meet on taking office and supported funding and legislation. <coughs> Special uh, thanks to Senator Bill Monning, who not only carried several pieces of legislation to support the cemetery efforts, but also successfully secured critical state funding for the project. Without that funding, we wouldn't even be here today. The Senator and his staff worked tirelessly to keep the federal grant application on schedule and continue to provide critical leadership. Senator, thank you there. All of us in the region of the project have been around for a long time. Of course, Jimmy Panetta and Mayor Jason Burnett, they've been absolutely key, and we would not be here. About a little over a year ago, we were talking about where's this money coming from, and then Jason Burnett said, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and lead a fundraising effort. Most of us are saying, yeah, right, and look what happened. Again, uh, that's real leadership on the part of uh, the, the mayor's part. It's really appreciated. Also, uh, thank you to the members of the Florida Abuse Authority Veterans uh, Issues Advisory Committee. They meet and they meet and they meet and spend hours and hours trying to find ways to raise funds and all of that did come to fruition. You've got some very dedicated veterans doing that and uh, the helping to ensure all parties that here at Globe has been a very demanding timetable. would also like to acknowledge uh, Chicago Title, they've been more than helpful in doing their, their, their job and due diligence, but also the four staff, the ones behind the scenes. Michael Bullard, our executive officer, works his tail off on that and uh, he deserves a lot of credit on that. Our new attorney counsel, John Giffen, has been really instrumental in there also. Also, Steve Ensley, Robert Norris, Jonathan Garcia, Alina Spellman, Chrissy Maris, Stan Cook, Ivana, uh, Ivana uh, Bedarnik, and our new associate planner has been here for about three days. Uh, Josh Metz, I think he's gotten two, three hours sleep in three days. There is stand up, Josh, and we can all throw some things in here. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a team effort, and uh, it would not be done with all the efforts of the folks here. Uh, as veterans know, when you go into battle, you win some battles, uh, you lose some battles, and we've won some battles, we've lost some battles in this, but the bottom line is we've won the war, I think, and, and I think everybody deserves a round of applause for that, please. Factory. <laughs> okay, we've got a little bit of the agenda left to go. We now Mr. Have Chairman, I, have, I actually have one more thank you I want to acknowledge. Uh, uh, his uh, uh, former assemblyman John Laird uh, and his staff, uh, who really got no credit, but he came up with the idea of creating the Endowment Fund, which was owned by Craig O'Donnell, uh, who's a friend of mine lives in Boston now. So I've been I've been emailing him, uh, you know, when we got the grant announcement for the federal grant, I've been emailing a lot of him and stuff, and, and uh, he was. He was doubtful all those years ago that this would actually happen, and uh, he's been very it's, very, it's very, it's very filling to see this uh, after all these years to come through, and I want to acknowledge uh, some of those folks who played in this role in moving this, and we're just taking, uh, moving that next uh, step based on what they worked they did uh, 10, 15 years ago. Thank you, Miller. And, um, well, if we're going to mention John, who was extraordinary, and his help, we can't forget that. Henry Miller helped to start this, and certainly Bruce McPherson did the original dedication. Truly, yeah. 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 it's a team effort. Okay, next on the agenda, public comment period. Any member of the public wishing to address this uh, this uh, board of directors on any item not on the agenda may do so now. Any member of the public wishing to address the board? Saying none, public comment period is closed. Any items from members? Saying none, ladies and gentlemen, we're adjourned again. Thank you. Oh, yeah.